Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada. I hope everybody has had a great week and has a good start to their weekend. Welcome, Jainil. Hi, Bakrat. Good to see our members joining in. This is a members chat class. Everybody is uh, welcome to watch, of course, and we are looking at a reading section. I will give you some uh, tips for a band nine, and we will look at a reading passage together from one of our exams. Hi, Sammy. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please visit us there, and for the general IELTS, visit us at g ieltshelp.com on both of our websites. We have loads and loads of materials to help you improve your English and your communication for the IELTS exam. While we wait for a few more members, let me just show you what these websites look like. This is our academic IELTS website here. This is where today's reading passage is coming from. Um, and uh, you can click this big red button to join the premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. We are a British Council Registration Center and certified agents, so you are in good hands. Uh, this is the General IELTS. And for General IELTS students, your reading passage three, your section three, is uh, very much similar to the academic. So today's reading passage could very easily be um, a section three reading passage for the general IELTS as well. So make sure to stick around and practice. Uh, you can click this big red button to join our premium package. Again, one time payment, lifetime access. Um, this is a reading class, everyone. So make sure to practice your reading. So read, um, and whenever you have the chance, uh, practice reading aloud so you can hear yourself. It's multiple sensory integration. It's a really good idea, especially when learning a foreign language, to read aloud. That means reading in such a way that you hear yourself. Welcome, Preeti. Hi, Rashika. All right. Um, so again, check out our websites. You can also download our apps academic IELTS help and general IELTS help and uh, follow us on Instagram IELTS underscore a help or G IELTS help. If you have some questions, uh, feel free to contact me Adrian at aehelp.com and I will uh, get back to you uh, in due time. Again, uh, we have started our new schedule this week. So members, this is the time for your classes. And then after this class, in about 90 minutes, uh, we have an all chat class where everybody will be able to join in on the chat. Uh, today we will look at speaking part two, a fresh new cue card. So uh, that will be great. All right. Uh, let's get into today's reading. Here we go. So this is coming from our second exam. Make it nice and big. And we do have audio for all of our reading as well. So uh, for those of you who have access to our websites, uh, check out the audio for some British speakers who read the text with you. Uh, this would be CD2 track six, but today I will be reading this with you. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we have a nice big picture uh, starting off this reading passage, and I believe it's a, a yawning tiger. Um, so, and then here we have the title below. Animals of different stripes. So again, members, the first step to um, good reading scores on the IELTS exam is to look at the title, uh, look at the picture if there is a picture, and then predict what you are going to read about. So uh, give me some ideas. What do you think this passage will be about? So based on this title, Animals of Different Stripes, what do you think you will be reading about? And give me nice, clear, concise ideas. It means be precise, be accurate with what you think this will be about. So different stripes. 
What could that be? What could it mean? This is your critical thinking here. This is what you should be thinking about immediately as soon as you read this title. So ask yourself the question, what is this uh, passage going to be about? And then answer it in a concise and complete way. <laughs> All right, Sammy says it could be about a variety of big cats. Anybody know the technical term for the family of cats? So it will be about a variety of, I believe they're felines. With an eye. Felines? Yeah. Something like that. If somebody gets a better spelling than me. Felines? Yeah, felines. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Um, Sammy says felines. <laughs> a variety of big cats. Yeah, so it will be about a variety of felines. Um, sure. All right. Uh, now, the next question is, uh, why? Why would the passage uh, describe or give this information to the reader? Okay, so again, uh, at home, you should write these down. And then um, during the exam... You want to do this all in your head, okay? So Rashika says it could possibly be about different types of tigers in different regions, okay? Yep. It's a little bit more natural, Rashika, than saying uh, different territories. So different uh, types of tigers in different regions of the world. Why does the passage talk about different types of tigers or different types of felines in different parts of the world? Why is that interesting to us? So uh, you have to remember whenever you read information in a magazine or in the IELTS exam, uh, the idea is for the information to be interesting or to be valuable in some way. So why would this information be interesting or valuable uh, to a reader? Um, what's, the, what's the logic behind it? Why would a person sit down and write um, uh, a passage about different types of tigers and different parts of the world. Again, by thinking about this kind of information before you really get into the reading, uh, you can predict what the author's saying and it will help you to understand the language and the content much, much more. Okay, so Bakhrat says to save and stop the extinction of these animals um, from the forests. Okay, good. Yeah, possibly, right? So, um, the purpose could be to encourage the conservation of uh, tigers around the world. Yeah, very good, Bakrat. And uh, this is why you want to always think in these classes, members, and give me your ideas so I can give you uh, the more precise uh, vocabulary so that you can express yourself better next time. So, Bakrat, to save and stop extinction, the word that's used in uh, English to express that uh, clear is conservation, to conserve. Okay, so the conservation of animals, in this case, the conservation of tigers. Okay, so conservation of tigers. Yeah, very well, that could be it. Okay. Um, Rashika says to protect endangered species, um, Prathamesh to give information about habitats, um, sure, yep. so to give readers 
an idea of the habits and habitats of these beautiful animals. Okay, very good. So now one more question, and you really do want to take the time to go over the what, the why, and the how. Okay, so um, how, here's the next question, how uh, will the author describe um, these varieties of tigers? Okay, and then of course here the answer, and if you're thinking this, you're on the right path. So here the answer would be, the author will discuss their appearance, their behaviors, uh, such as eating, reproduction, and development. Okay. So why do I know that? Because if I were the author, that's what I would do. So if I wrote about tigers, I would write down first what they look like. I would write about their habitats, where they live. I would write about their eating habits, what they eat, how they hunt. So all of these details, their reproduction, okay? So mating rituals uh, and so on. So again, when you have this picture and when you have this title animals of different stripes stripes are these nice black patterns that you see on the tiger's fur um, then in the real exam very quickly I would go okay so what is this about it's about different types of tigers in different parts of the world I know from my experience that I've seen white tigers I've seen tigers that are quite large and uh, quite furry, the Siberian tigers. I've seen the Bengal tigers that live in India, Bangladesh. Okay, so all of those thoughts start to come to mind. All right, and then I look at the questions after the passage to see if I can get a little bit more information and insight uh, into what I will be reading. So sure enough, our first set of questions is a classification uh, these are quite popular in the IELTS exams these days, these classification type questions. Again, with this type of question, skimming and scanning, not a very effective strategy because this information does not necessarily come in the order of the passage. It can be uh, anywhere in the passage. You really do have to read the passage to answer this. So here we have classify the following facts as applying to a, Bengal tigers, B, Siberian tigers. So right away, I know that I'm going to be reading about Bengal tigers and about Siberian tigers. That's great, because now I have uh, confirmation that what I was inferring with the title is accurate, okay? So all of this information is somewhere in the text. It makes sense for me to read it, go over it, okay? So members, let's read these together. So lives further from the equator, all right? Number 15 has a significantly higher population. 16 exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. 17 grows no additional fur during different seasons. 18 lives in a climate with large temperature fluctuations. Okay, and at home, when you're practicing, what you should do to improve both your English and your reading comprehension and your IELTS band score is to paraphrase these kinds of questions before you read the passage because that's what the IELTS does. So the IELTS is usually uh, paraphrasing uh, these kinds of questions using uh, different um, words, okay? So, uh, lives further from the equator. How could you say that in a different way? So, what might be some other ways that the author can write this information? Members, can you paraphrase uh, this statement for me? 
lives further from the equator. Okay. All right, I'm going to do the same. So uh, if you don't know the, any other ways or any other words to um, state uh, these words such as equator, then what you want to do is put it into the thesaurus. The thesaurus, it's not a dinosaur, <laughs> it's a thesaurus. Um, a thesaurus will give you synonyms and other ways to express these words. Okay. Bafra says, shelter out of the mid part of land. Um, it's a bit awkward, Bakrad, but you have the right idea. Okay, Prathamesh says, reside away from the equator. Stay beyond the equator. Okay, so uh, I would write um, inhabits regions at a greater distance um, from equatorial um, territories. Okay, so it's quite wordy, but it definitely makes sense. So inhabits regions at a greater distance from equatorial territories, or we can even say countries. Okay, and uh, you're right, Bakrat, the equator or equatorial regions, uh, the equator is the center line uh, around the earth. So when you have the earth, that line that goes through the middle, okay, um, one country that of course always comes to mind is Ecuador, uh, the, that line that goes through the middle where it's very hot usually, and there aren't really uh, seasons, summer all year round. Um, that is the equator, okay? So when you read this, you want to be visual as well. So it lives further uh, from the equator, either to the north or to the south, as we will discover. I'm sure it's more likely the north. Okay, uh, paraphrase the next one for me, remember? So has a significantly higher population, okay? Has a significantly higher population. Paraphrasing and practicing paraphrasing regularly when you're getting ready for your IELTS exam is absolutely uh, a critical step for improving your English and for improving your band score. So I highly, highly recommend it. Okay. So has significantly higher populations. What's another uh, way to say that? Okay, uh, Osman says it could be overpopulation. Uh, I don't think that's an accurate paraphrase. Bakrat says mass population, especially when we're thinking about tigers. I don't think saying mass population would be accurate. Osman says densely populated um, could be. Uh, it's relative, right? It's higher population than another type of tiger. So uh, there are considerably greater numbers of this tiger, okay? So that's how I would paraphrase it. There are considerably greater numbers of this tiger, okay? Sammy says, has an importantly, hugely populated, has a importantly, okay, that's grammatically incorrect, Sammy. So uh, when you're paraphrasing, make sure that your grammar is accurate. That's really important, okay? Kaldeep says, contains noticeably denser populations. Uh, dense is not necessarily the same as a higher population. You could have a dense population, but not necessarily have a greater or a higher population. So when you have a word that shows relative, like higher population, greater numbers, okay? That's a more accurate paraphrase. Higher population, greater numbers, all right? When you're doing this paraphrasing, you have um, some uh, English teachers or some uh, partners that you practice, that you study with together, uh, give each other the paraphrasing and ask to check 
for accuracy. Okay, it's very, very important. All right, you want your paraphrasing uh, to be accurate. Okay. Um, exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. Can you paraphrase that for me? So exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. How can we say that in another way? Okay, I'm going to start writing it. And let's see if you come up with something similar. Okay, so exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. Osman says shows a large number of movements depending on the area. Uh, size fluctuations is the size of the animal, so shows great variation in size related to location. That's what I would think, okay? Sammy says, shows a bigger size variation based on location. Okay, that's quite good, Sammy. Okay. Rahul says, has different physical size of tigers from location to location. Yeah, that's not bad, Rahul. That's a fairly good paraphrase as well. Uh, Bakrat says, displays huge size variation depending on location. Instead of earth, Bakrat, location. You cannot use the word earth in that context, okay? All right, good. So that's what you want to do. You want to paraphrase the questions before you start reading. And this is really good practice to do at home before you sit your IELTS exam, all right? So uh, we won't do it for the other two. We wanna keep moving forward here, but uh, let's go through these. So grows no additional fur during different seasons. So produces no extra hair on its body uh, during summer, winter, uh, fall, spring. 18, lives in a climate with large temperature fluctuations, inhabits um, a, an area with temperatures uh, that uh, change drastically from season to season. Okay. Now, uh, our next set of questions are these yes, no, not given questions. So some of these questions are not given. Some of them are false, so they don't agree with the author. Uh, we do not read these kinds of questions before the passage because they are just going to be confusing and it's not necessary, okay? So always avoid the yes, no, not given true, false, not given questions before the passage. I will show you another strategy a little bit later on what you can do with these. Uh, paraphrasing these questions when you're practicing at home is a good idea, okay? Welcome, Rodolfo. Good to see you in the class. That's fantastic. All right. So here we have some short answers. These are definitely good to review. All of this information is somewhere in the passage, okay? Uh, and again, paraphrase these at home just like I showed you with the first set of questions. So here, write no more than two words for each answer. Uh, 24, humans are not a part of the tiger's regular something. While not common, the Bengal tiger will resort to something humans especially if they are unable to process the flesh of other animals. Okay. Attacks by bangles are often committed in the defense of the tiger's something. Okay, so even uh, now we have more ideas of what this passage is actually about. Uh, so that's great. And of course, here we should be visualizing. Okay, so we should picture that we are part of this information. It's very physical. So when you have information that's uh, relatively easy to visualize, like tigers, okay, we all love tigers. We all know what they look like. Uh, make sure to create clear 
pictures and images in your mind uh, of these tigers as you're reading this information and include yourself. So imagine that you are conservationist. Your goal is to protect the tigers and you are walking around in the jungles of India with your tranquilizer gun and you're looking for these tigers. Uh, you're wanting to save them, learn about them. So be a part of the information, okay? Visualizing is very, very important, especially when you have such a strongly visual piece of information. Okay. So uh, here we go. Let's start reading. And again, uh, this is reading, so make sure to read with me. Uh, and if you have the chance, then definitely read aloud. Okay. So... I can make this even a little bit bigger for us because we have actual columns here. So read from the title, Animals of Different Stripes. Okay, good. So here we go. The Siberian and Bengal tigers are two of the most well-known types of tigers. These tigers are very similar. In fact, they come from the same species, but they do have some important differences. These similarities and differences, while interesting to note, are vital pieces of information for the people in charge of the conservation of endangered species of tigers. Wildlife conservationists have to tell the difference between the two in order to keep accurate counts of the respective populations. The first main difference between the two tigers is the location of their habitats. The Siberian tiger today lives only in the far northeast part of Russia called Siberia. Okay, And when we read this, the Siberian tiger today lives only in the far northeast part. This far northeast part, right away we think, oh yeah, that one question with the lives further from the equator, from that center line. So uh, here, I remember that. Now, do I stop and go and answer that question? No, not yet, because uh, I might read some other information that might give me ideas of another tiger that lives even further from the equator. I don't know. Um, so you shouldn't stop to answer questions while you're reading. Just visualize them and note them. You will remember the information as long as you're reading actively. So it is not a good idea to stop and answer questions while you read. There's only one question type that you should do that for, and we don't have that here. Um, just as a bonus question for some of our students that are regularly in these classes, uh, any members, do you know which question you can answer while reading? There's only one question type that you should answer while you read. Does anybody know what that question type is? So what's the one and only question type that's a good idea to answer while you read? Sammy says headings. Yeah, that's right. So list of headings. List of headings are the only ones, okay? Yeah, that's right, Rahul, matching headings. So matching headings, and you answer those after each paragraph. You should not stop uh, in the middle of a paragraph to answer a question. Why is that? Why is it a bad idea to stop and answer a question in the middle of a paragraph? Anybody know? So it's just a, <laughs> I'm stopping in the middle of a paragraph to explain this to you, but that way I'm sure he'll remember this. So... Um, it is not a good, so this is a big tip here, okay? It is not a good idea to stop and answer questions in the middle of a paragraph because a... 
Yeah, exactly. So Kaldeep says, sometimes the information may change in the next paragraph. Okay, yeah, yeah, you might get a different answer later on. Yep, yeah, and B, it will break your concentration and a visualization uh, for the information, okay? So it becomes more difficult, so it's actually a slower method. Yeah, you can get confused a little bit easier as well. So it's not a good idea to do that. So you want to keep reading, okay? I don't know about you, but I'm already confused, okay? <laughs> so uh, I'm going to go from the top of this paragraph here. Uh, the first main difference between the two tigers is the location of their habitats. The Siberian tiger today lives only in the far northeast part of Russia called Siberia, although it used to live as far west as Western Asia and as far east as parts of Alaska. One of the main reasons Siberian tigers do not live in China anymore is due to widespread illegal hunting there in the past. Bengal tigers live in a warmer, more southern climate. They reside mostly in India, but also in Bangladesh, Nepal, and Bhutan. Bengal tigers are the most numerous of all tigers with approximately 1,800 living in the wild. So most numerous. Again, I remember some paraphrasing there. Siberian tigers conversely number only about two to 300 in their natural habitats. Both tigers are extremely popular zoo exhibits, which further contributes to the low numbers of both, especially the Siberian tiger. There have been efforts to breed Siberian tigers in captivity, and many of these efforts have been successful. However, the offspring are unfit to live in the wild. At the very least, these efforts allow zoos to maintain their exhibits without taking even more tigers out of the wild population. Siberian tigers, on average, are larger than Bengals. The average weight of a Bengal male is about 220 kilograms. while the weight of a Siberian averages slightly heavier. Amazingly, Siberian tigers can be as large as 320 kilograms. The length of these animals are also different. On average, male Siberian tigers have a nose-to-tail length of 3 meters, while the Bengal's length is slightly shorter. Their tail lengths, interestingly, are the same, averaging about 1 meter. One notable observation is that the further north in the Bengal tiger's habitat, the larger the animals get. The average weight of a tiger in northern India is about 15 kilograms more than ones in southern India, where the average recorded weight is 220 kilograms. Another clear difference between the two tigers is the seasonal growth of a winter coat for the Siberian tiger. Since they live in northern Russia, which is an unforgiving climate in the winter, the ability to endure temperatures well below freezing is essential for survival. Unlike the Bengal tiger, which lives in more equatorial climates around India, where the temperatures are more or less the same year round, the Siberian lives in a climate where the temperature Vary more than 50 degrees Celsius. Because of this, Siberians grow longer fur in the winter. For example, the fur on the Siberian's back in the summer measures about 16 millimeters, while in the winter this length almost triples. The Bengal tiger has no need for such a long winter coat. 
The two tigers share many similarities, including diet and reproduction. Being carnivorous, other animals are the food supply for both. The types of animals hunted are various due to the different regions that are home to these tigers. Bengals eat animals such as wild boar, water buffalo, and chital, while Siberian tigers eat primarily wild boar, deer, and moose. Bengals and Siberians have very similar reproduction cycles. Both tigers reach maturity around four years of age, at which time they begin their mating rituals. The females are pregnant for about 15 weeks and give birth to between one and four cubs. Each of these cubs weighs about a kilogram and will be entirely dependent on their mother for the first six months of life. After that time, they begin their learning process where they develop the skills they need to hunt and kill for survival. After two or three years, the cubs are ready to leave their mother and hunt independently. And at the age of four or five, they reach sexual maturity and so the cycle continues. One last difference between the two tigers is a significant one, especially for humans. Neither tiger hunts humans as part of their normal diet, but one of the two tigers is known to be a man-eater. The Bengal tiger, under the right circumstances, will eat humans. Bengals will attack humans in two cases. First, they will attack humans who interfere with the Bengals' hunting or feeding. Bengal mothers do not take kindly to people when they are feeding their cubs. Also, older Bengals will kill humans for food because humans are easy to eat. Unlike wild boar, for example, human skin is soft and fleshy, perfect for an old tiger with weak muscles and worn down teeth. Iberians, however, will generally not attack humans unless they feel threatened. As such, records show that Bengal attacks are far more common than Siberian attacks. All right, good. So here we have um, the uh, information about Siberians and Bengals. Make sure to focus, visualize, stay with the flow. Okay, Jainil? All right. Okay, uh, so let's get to the questions. And again, I mentioned this yesterday. Yesterday we did a reading as well. Uh, you shouldn't be looking at the paragraph to answer all of these questions. So uh, a very important tip, students. Okay, this is my tip number two for the day. Is uh, to get a high band score, you should not need to look at the passage to answer all of the questions. Ideally, you should be able to answer at least 50 to 60 percent of the questions confidently without having to search the paragraphs, okay? So if you're not able to do this, then you really have to work on your visualization skills, your active reading skills, your comprehension skills. You should not have to go back and check the passage for every question. If that's happening, then yeah, it's gonna be tough and you will likely run out of time. So that should not be happening, okay? All right, so let's answer some questions together. Uh, here we go. Uh, so A, Bengal tigers that primarily live in India, Nepal, Bhutan, and Siberian tigers which primarily live in uh, Russia. Okay, um, so let's do this. Uh, A, Bengal, B, Siberian. 
Number 14 lives further from the equator. So which of these tigers lives further from the equator? The Bengal or the Siberian? So Jainil and Bakrat say, well, it's the Siberian. Uh, the passage clearly said that this tiger lives in uh, northern parts of Russia. So clearly B is the right answer. Okay, very good. So B it is. Yeah, don't need to look at the passage. Uh, number 15 has a significantly higher population. So which tiger has greater numbers, the Bengal tiger or the Siberian tiger? Okay, A is Bengal, B is Siberian. Don't be confused by B, Bengal, okay? So, yeah, so Prathamesh, Bakrat, Osman, uh, Rashika, Kashir shall all agree that A, yeah, quite a bit more, six times more, right? So Siberian tigers around 300, Bengal tigers around 1,800. So far more, um, uh, far, far more uh, Bengal tigers than Siberian tigers. I agree, okay? Uh, number 16 exhibits large size fluctuations depending on geography. So shows a variance in its size depending on where it lives, on its location. Was that the Bengal tiger or was that the uh, Siberian tiger? So Bakrat says B, which is the Siberian tiger. Sami says B. Uh, Kashirsha says A. Prathamesh says A. So this one's a little bit of a question mark, right? This is the one where you'd want to go back and check. Uh, size fluctuation means differences in size. And if you visualize this, uh, it was a little bit tricky because the Siberian tiger is bigger, but it's the Bengal tiger that shows size fluctuations. The answer for this one comes from here. Okay. So here's where you really had to visualize it. Okay. So one notable observation is that the further north the Bengal tiger's habitat, the larger the animals get. The average weight of a tiger in northern India is about 15 kilograms more than ones in southern India, where the average recorded weight is 220. So this part here is explaining that Bengal tigers are smaller or bigger depending on where they live. Siberian tigers are basically all the same size, okay? So this was a little bit of a trickier question, but if you visualize, you could have gotten it. So here it's A, uh, Bengal tigers, okay? Again, all right, so B-A-A. -A. Okay, number 17 grows no additional fur during different seasons. Um, IELTS can be a little bit tricky at times. Be really careful with these negative uh, words like no, okay? So grows no additional fur. Um, is it A, Bengal tigers or B, Siberian tigers? Okay, Jainil, Rahul, and Kashir to say that's the Bengal tiger. It makes sense. They live closer to the equator. Yeah, so it's the Bengal tiger. Bengal tigers do not grow longer fur because they don't have to. There's no cold winter, right? Okay, um, and number 18 lives in a climate with large temperature fluctuations. So large temperature fluctuations means that the climate goes up and down. I remember that the passage said the Siberian tiger uh, lives in a region of the world where there's a temperature change of 50 degrees Celsius between winter and summer. So it's going to be for sure the Siberian tiger. So we have B. Okay. So these are the answers. B, A, 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 B. Okay. Be really, really careful with the wording of questions, okay, like negatives, such as no, all right? Sometimes, even when students understand the passage, they get questions wrong, not because they didn't understand the passage, but because they didn't really pay enough attention to the question. So that's another really, really important tip, members, for today, is pay careful attention to the questions. 
Um, even when you understand the passage, if you misunderstand the question, you can get them wrong. So careful with that. Okay. All right. So, Osman, as I explained, number 16, the Bengal tigers um, show variation in size as the passage explained, by 15 kilograms, so about 10% of their body weight, they can be bigger or smaller depending on where they are found in India, Nepal, or Bhutan. Okay. So the passage explained that. If you missed that part, uh, Osman, just go back a little bit in the video later and check it out. Okay. So now we have this yes, no, not given. Uh, both animals are primarily meat eaters. Okay, that's kind of a gentle start to the questions. Um, so first we have to figure out if this is important information for the passage. If it is important information for the passage, it will likely be given. Okay, so is it important to know um, what these animals eat for the passage on tigers? Yes, I think so. It's important. Jainil agrees. So that means that it's going to be given. Okay, so the information is going to be given. Now, is it true that both of these tigers are meat eaters? Yes, it's true. So if it's given and it's true, then it's going to be a yes in this case. It's going to agree with the author. Okay. Um, so the gestation period for females is about four years. Okay, now you might be able to figure out from the word females that gestation period means to be pregnant. So the female tiger is pregnant for about four years. Now I remember that I read about the reproduction of these tigers. So uh, it is important. So it is given. Now, is it true that a female tiger will be pregnant for four years? Prathamesh says no. That would be just kind of silly, right? That doesn't make sense. Um, four years, definitely no. I think it was maybe six months or something like that. So it contradicts the author. Okay. Uh, number 21, young tigers need their mother for survival during their first half year. So during the first six months, young tigers need their mother for survival. Is that information important for the passage that young tigers need their mothers for survival? I think so. Um, I'm not 100% sure because it is quite a bit of detail. Uh, is it true? It sounds like it is, so I'm not sure, but this time I'm going to check. And I remember that this information was kind of near the end. So here we go. Um, the female's pregnant for about 15 weeks, okay, and give birth uh, to between one and four cubs. Each of these cubs weighs about a kilogram and will be entirely dependent on their mother for the first six months of life. Okay, so there's the information. Now I'm confident because six months is half a year. Okay, so I go back. And now I can answer this question with a yes. Okay. All right. Uh, 22. Killing is a rite of passage which shows a cub is ready to leave its mother. Um, I think that's going to be too much detail. It's not important for the passage. I'm going to go with a not given and then go to the next one. Okay. Number 23. If a mother gives birth to one to four cubs, it is common for one not to live past six months. I don't remember visualizing um, tiger cubs dying uh, in this passage, so I don't think it's important. I'm going to go with a not given again. If I have time later, I might go back and check for these uh, near the end. But uh, based on what a lot of the members are saying as well, not given, it's probably right. Now, if I'm not sure, I can go back and check. At this point, I'm going to indicate them as not given. 
and I will answer the other questions so that I don't run out of time. And if I have time, I will go back and check those. Okay. All right. Okay. So only if I have time. All right. Here we go. So uh, these are fill in the blanks. Humans are not a part of the tiger's regular what? I think I can finish this without searching the text. Um, it makes logical sense how to finish this sentence. Plus, I remember reading about it. So humans are not a part of the tiger's regular. Yeah, Prathamesh says diet. Jainil says that too. I agree. That was in my mind as well diet right it's not a part of the regular nutrition kashirsha nutrition is a synonym for diet so i'm sure they will take that word nutrition okay while not common the bengal tiger will resort to something humans um that was eating humans okay uh especially if they're unable to process the flesh of other animals so yeah when they're old and weak, uh, they might eat a human or two, if uh, maybe. Okay, and then number 26, attacks by bangles are often committed in defense of the tiger's something. So something that the tiger possesses or owns. Uh, tiger's babies, yeah, but we don't say babies. There's a more technical word for that. Uh, Prathamesh says cubs. Yeah, they're called cubs. For bears as well, by the way, bear cubs. For wolves, we don't call them wolf puppies. We call them wolf cubs, okay? So wolf cubs, bear cubs, tiger cubs, all right? So cubs it is. All right, so good job on this reading today, members. Fantastic. If you missed uh, a part of the reading or the questions, don't worry. You can go back and review this lesson later. Uh, and I highly recommend that you do when you have some time, reread, copy, practice, okay? And uh, I will be back in about 30 minutes with another live IELTS lesson, which will be speaking part two cue card. So for all of our members and for all of our amazing uh, audience, please join me for that reading session, okay? Um, and... Uh, Remember, you can get all of our exams, all of our videos by signing up to our premium package at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gielshelp.com for general IELTS. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Definitely, definitely worth it. Um, this is our general IELTS website here. Click that big red button. And this is our academic IELTS website here at aehelp.com. Click that big red button. You're very welcome, members. I'm glad you enjoyed the class. And hopefully I will see you shortly. I'm Adrian signing out for now. I'll be back soon. Bye.